Greetings. I once again apologize to interrupt your daily viewing pleasure for this important announcement. <laughs> Greetings. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Halfway Gaming, and it's time we complete episode 3 of our Void Storyteller Rimworld series. Before we can begin though, some of you would have probably noticed the frequent messages popping up on the top left of the screen during gameplay. This is because we have the progress renderer mod installed that allows us to take photos of our base, which I set to do every two hours. So by the end of the series, however that may happen, we will have a time lapse of our entire base. With that said, let's begin. With our first rice harvest, the nearly unobtainable bedroll, and the countless infections in the last episode, we can start out with something a little different. As you can see here, I have started to plan out the Void Monument that our colonists will have to build in order to infiltrate Void itself. It nicely fits into this cavernous area, reducing future mining time. It will be made out of stone to ensure that no valuable resources are wasted, and then painted by our colonists with a color scheme that will truly represent Void. But for now, Pickle can collect up the harvested rice from the fields and keep producing simple meals. As we can see, our colonists are still injured from the battles in the previous episode. The fight with the insects and each other. Just before night arrives, Pickle, the colony's secondary chef, cooks up a meal for Rena, which coincidentally levels her up to level 4. Still not a level worthy to commemorate, but on the way to it. Just a few moments later, the battle horn calls for us. As it seems that our colonists will soon fight their first raid of the series. An outlander by the name of Fleeb has come to attack our colony immediately. With a shooting skill of 11 and a melee skill of 0, I think the best option right now is to wait for him around a corner and beat him with logs. Plus, only one of our colonists has any form of a ranged weapon. The loot that Fleeb will drop looks quite helpful and even if we can't use his clothing, if it taints, then a good revolver and six more components isn't the worst raid loot I've had. As Gideon is currently in a mental break, we may take a few more bruises when we engage him. We can draft and position our colonists directly behind this mountain as Fleeb is forced to take this path if he wants to come to our base. Just as the plan is commencing, Fleeb only a short distance away from our colonists spots the insect in the caves at the top of the map and seems like he wishes to engage with them. Fleeb, in my opinion, being way too ambitious, awakens the sleeping insects and lands a good hit, but it seems that that is the last good hit he will ever have. With Fleeb taken down by the horde of insects, none of his loot that he took into battle will be reachable without risking one of our colonists' lives. Which is a little disappointing, but the first raid of the series, very successful. With our colonists undrafted, they can now go safely to sleep. But the Void Storyteller thinks otherwise, sending an even larger raid. Perhaps he was angry that his previous raid didn't even scratch our colonists? This time, a group of tribespeople. They aren't attacking right away, so we can have our colonists rest and heal for the night. Also, hopefully giving Gideon enough time to snap out of that mental break. Both tribespeople are exceptional colonist candidates, but luckily, they have poor skill with any weapon. If one of these raiders are downed but not yet killed, we will heavily consider capturing one for recruitment purposes. With the raid happening, it also makes me wonder if they are also willing to take on the insects in the cave. But it's always better to be safe than sorry, so we can re-equip Pickle and Rena with a single piece of wood. To somewhat relax the mood, a beautiful aurora is lighting up the sky. 
It won't actually adjust the moods of our colonists unless they go outside, but it's still nice. The disappointing end of the Aurora is also the beginning of the raid. So we can position all our colonists, except for Gideon of course, to the water's edge. We will do this consistently, firstly to encourage the raiders to travel over the water to get to us, so Seven can take a few shots at them before engaging into melee attack. With Marcus encountering a major break risk, it severely puts the success of the raid into the storyteller's hands. The tribalists are entering the range of the chain shotgun, landing two of the three shots delivered by Seven dealing heavy damage. After hitting Osin once more, we can switch targets as Trobo is coming in quickly and goes down just as fast. Leaving us with one more raider to defeat. Pickle arrives at a good time, helping to down Osin and leaving us with possibly no injuries. But the decision, which tribalist do we want in our colony? So what kind of loot have we earned from this battle? Well, an upgrade to say the least for both Marcus and Rena, as even a steel knife with poor quality slightly outdoes a piece of wood in terms of melee damage. Looking at Trobo, our first candidate, we can see that he is an undergrounder, meaning that they actually enjoy and get a mood boost for spending lots of time indoors. And secondly, a jogger upping his movement speed. He also has a good amount of passions, so basically an all-rounder colonist. Oh, and a second doctor for our colony. Moving on to Osin. In terms of health, he has some permanent injuries, unlike Trobo, which is minor, but still a little bit annoying. His skill set, I would say, far outweighs Trobo's, especially his plant work. It's a hard decision, but we will go with Trobo, mainly for his good doctoring skill, in which we will need far more than plant work, as well as his health traits are overall better. Sorry, Osin, but I would take both of you if our colony was in a better position. We currently only have one big room, so we can seal off this part of the cave to make a new room for our prisoner. With a time limit before our hopefully future colonist dies, we can right away have Pickle construct a steel door to seal off this part of the cave. Now that that is finished, we can set the sleeping spot to be for a prisoner and go collect Trobo. Pickle, our main and only doctor for now, immediately goes tending to Trobo as he has four more hours until death. Pickle with no medicine produces some okay tens. We can now set Trobo to be recruited into our colony. With a resistance of 24, it will take our colonists a little while before Trobo will actually consider joining us. With our raw food temporarily running out, the Arctic Fox mentioned in the previous episode is looking really appealing. So we can set Marcus to go fetch it. Keeping in mind that he will have to be quick as the cougar and wolf in the area could possibly be hungry. I also unforbid all the items on the map, so if you think of anything that should never be unforbidden, say in some caves at the top of the map, you'd be very right. Maybe us being too ambitious gives a warning that the cougar is now hunting Marcus, which is a problem because it is way faster than him. We now draft all our colonists, just in case it catches him. But luckily, he makes it inside, and the door shuts behind him. With the corpse of Oshin on our property, anyone who goes close to him will get a somewhat large mood penalty. So to avoid that, we can make a zone just for raider corpses, right over here in the water, so it decomposes faster. With a familiar noise coming from below our base, we notice that we have effectively led the cougar into area 1, where our muffalos are. And it's getting hungry, so we will have to deal with that very soon before it gets any muffalo cravings. It seems that an eclipse has also come about, which doesn't affect us too much as we don't have any solar panels, but it will stop our crops from growing in this period of time.
With another day ending in the marshy gloom, I spot Seven moving towards the top of the map, where Fleeb is resting. And so would have Seven if I didn't see him, as he is going to collect the loot that I unforbid. With Marcus reaching level 5 in his plant skill, it basically concludes the day for our colonists, in which two raids were fought. Nothing else really happens. Oh, except Trobo, our current prisoner, acquires an infection. But luckily this time we have a doctor. So we can have Pickle tend to Trobo with an almost 100% chance of giving a good tend with the Glitter World medicine. Or should I say 130%. Pickle levels up her medical skill to level 7. With the colonists all sleeping, we can begin the orders for the monument. First placing the blueprints for the limestone walls to follow the pattern of the planning marks. To acquire a second room, possibly a bedroom even. Let me know when you think you have figured out what this monument actually is. It will be interesting to see who figures it out. Gideon, after what seems like an eternity in a mental break, finally comes out of it. But with still a major break risk, as he is quite hungry. At 2 in the morning, the small square-like room is being constructed by Rena, but I think that with the cougar this close to her, it's time for a little hunting. To prepare ourselves, we can position Rena and Seven right next to the door. What should happen is Seven, using the chain shotgun, can peek through the door, giving him time to take a few shots at the cougar. We can also set the raccoon to be hunted as well. All going better than planned, as it seems that the cougar after two hits doesn't even take revenge on Seven. And the cougar never stood a chance against Seven with the chain shotgun. I had positioned Rena to be beside the door in case the cougar somehow managed to get through it, but I should have known better. With Rena so urgently wanting to construct the limestone room, leading into Gideon gaining another level to his cooking skill. As not much happens so far since the eclipse arrived, we get our first quest of the series, Brana's Baby Blues. <laughs> this sounds exciting already. So the chief of the Choco Nation is informing us about a collection of valuables worth only 100,000 silver. Wait, 100,000? What? So apparently the void mod I added comes with a rapid healing pill, which was actually the cure to some crazy viral outbreak caused by the same company. It basically is like Healamex serum, I guess. It just it heals everything. And we can get 34 of it? Very tempting, but it's two and a half days away, meaning at least five days in total just for travel. And if we actually acquire these pills, our raids are going to be out of control, as our colony wealth would skyrocket. Besides, we don't really need it currently. Moving on, it seems that Seven, our current only shooter, has gotten food poisoning after eating the previous meal. I'm guessing that Pickle may have cooked that one. Speaking of which, it looks like he's just about to attempt to hunt this raccoon. Oh, never mind. I really underestimated him there. Just a few small things to take us through the day now. We can reinstall that glow pod next to one of our workstations to shed light and give a production speed boost. More trees and walls are being built and chopped down. Both Trobo and Gideon also getting food poisoning. Must have been a bad batch. Wonder who did that. Also creating a stockpile zone for the rice and one for animal corpses eventually. And Seven takes nearly two hours to eat a meal. Just before Gideon can fall into a bed, a pack of man-hunting iguanas have entered the top of our map. Only three, but as we know far too well, anything that can pierce the skin is a threat to our colonists. Mostly in the form of infections though. With the usual tactic, we can position our colonists beside the waterline, with two of them just still having food poisoning, and as you can see, bringing their consciousness below 50%. At this point, we are trying to arrange our colonists so that the brawlers are in front of Seven. 
but it doesn't matter as we can notice that the iguanas have totally bypassed the marsh from above the lake. And despite trying to lure them one more time, they just keep heading down until they reach the underside of our base, where one of them makes a new friend. I think his name's Spike? It's beginning to rain for the first time ever, but that's the least of our worries right now, as the iguanas seem to be heading right for one of our muffalos, and then just turn around. Very confusing. Maybe they ignored us at the start because they were for some reason trying to get there? I'm not entirely sure. With the cougar door trick working so well last time, we almost have to do that again. Before we begin though, it only makes sense to let Seven eat beforehand, as this could be a lengthy process. It seems that Trobo, our prisoner, has indeed gone berserk, and at a scary time too, as his infection requires tending to. Luckily, with the previous tend being 130%, he is already on 95% immunity, so he should recover fine. Trobo becoming berserk also leads to him trying to break down the door, and we can't repair it at the same speed either, so it looks like before we can deal with those iguanas, we'll have to take down and tend to Trobo for the second time so far. Me, for some reason, not realizing that Seven will instinctively shoot Trobo, takes two heavy hits to the torso and hand. Now, this is one of the worst ways of restraining someone as he could have easily been left with some sort of permanent injury, like a missing limb. We're lucky that the third shot missed him on the ground too. After we go through with the same routine with Pickle rescuing and tending, the battle with those two iguanas still goes on. Seven can poke through the door with only enough time for one round of shots, but that's enough to down the iguana. Now, for the rest of the battle, we only have to worry about that one iguana, so we can just attempt a shot and then go back inside, doing this until we land a hit. The plan falls through quickly, though, as the iguana outruns the door closing, and it sneaks its way inside. Thankfully, Rena is ready and can back up Seven in the melee fight. Rena actually taking some medium-sized hits but a very successful battle. With the battle of the iguanas finally over, Trobo fully rescued from his infection and fully tended to, I think this is a great place to end the episode. Having several major threats to our colony this episode, we just got a very slight taste of what the Void Storyteller can throw at us. Not even sending out any Void Soldiers to raid us yet. I think that we have to work on our base building and refining next episode. We have begun construction of the Void Monument and captured a hopefully new recruit for our colony to acquire a second Doctor. So to sum up how we did, I think we progressed a fair way. For this episode, that's all I have for you, so thanks for watching, and stay halfway.